all right welcome back everyone to another video and in this one we'll be taking a look at the pine book pro yet again and we'll be attempting to uh, at installing fedora uh, linux on this um, and it's a bit different because fedora has just generic arm images so they don't have a pine book specific image that you can just plop in and you know have it running so fedora works with just like one kernel for all devices so yeah uh the one thing we need to do for that is to update the u-boot on the spi flash of this laptop uh pine 64 for whatever reason does not really provide they, they have the spi flash built in but they don't have proper u-boot installed on the spi flash so install SPI flash and then it's pretty much plug in a USB drive with uh, ARC, ARC 64 ISO for Fedora 34 and you, you can install it or just boot it directly off an SD card. So we'll do that as well. First of all, we do need to figure out um, setting up that SPI flashing SD card uh, and then uh, we can get started. So quickly we'll start with setting up that said sd card all right so now moving on to the sd card flashing situation first we need to install the latest uh, u-boot images from the fedora repository uh, these are mostly upstream but with a few uh, patches applied so this should give us um, the specific u-boot image that we require and then uh, this gives us a SPI flashing disk utility. Um, so pretty straightforward. So sudo SPI flashing disk target is the Pinebook Pro RK3399 and the device or the sd card is at sde uh, it's unmounted from everywhere else so this should be fine and that's just deeding stuff uh, on the sd card at the correct offsets which is still a problem with rk3399 it only boots at some particular offset sync for good measure and we can eject the sd card from here uh, all right that's it that's all we need to do on a regular fedora system um i can switch back to the pinebook pro and take the sd card out so back on this desk here um and let's have some good old fun um firstly power it off completely Right now it's off, the LEDs are off. I can take off, take out the SD card that I already had in its place. So that was a 128 gig one. And then insert the freshly flashed one that has the uh, U boot. Come on. There it is. Uh, powered it on, and I should see. A, uh, a U boot prompt uh, at which point I have to hit any key. Um, that is, of course, provided that the Pinebook Pro boots from the SD card. If not, I'll have to know it did not. Uh, so I will have to go through the entire process of uh, disabling the EMMC, which is not fun. Hmm. Well, that just made this video a bit more longer. All right, so I have the pine book upside down and let's go ahead and open it up and see what's in it. And try to disable the EMMC once and for all. Well, no, I still need the MMC to install stuff onto it. Okay, what else do we need? Um,
mean, one thing I wish these guys would have improved upon was the um, speakers. Speakers on this laptop is absolute crap. Um, right, so that's the main board. It's lowering the brightness so everyone can see because everything's really reflective here. Um, that's the EMMC. So, so this is the switch that seems to be disabling EMMC for us. Uh, I think I should just pop this EMMC out and format it because I have one of those so the EMC comes out like this and I have one of these things And I can just put this like it and um, use it as an SD card and actually format the EMMC. So I'm going to go ahead and try to do that. I'll have to probably erase all of the EMMC um, since it, it will probably have boot sector in the first few blocks and then other things so I'll just do a overwrite with zero it's 64 gigs I'm not sure how long it will take but let's put that in that seems to be recognized properly all right so this is what's happening now um, when you press power for a few seconds the LED will not come off because the upstream UBU doesn't have all the controls to power on the LED but what will come on is the display. So now we have to flash the SPI. So we go into prompt, we just press any button as soon as the prompt thing comes up here. Uh, and then we do SF probe. That should give us, oh, hello, hello. That decided to hang itself, perfect. Um, hmm. So it detects a 16 megabits, maybe bits, maybe bytes of um, SPI flash. And so we start writing stuff to it. First, we have to load stuff. So load MMC 1 1 and then ftd flatten device tree address r to idb loader dot spi that reads it and sf update so i think we're flashing it now And then same FTD address R um, zero and file size. So that's writing it to the SPI flash. For the next one, we do load MMC same and instead of idb loader dot spi uh we write u boot dot idb itb that loads it and then we write it this time at address sixty thousand probably in hex and file size 
uh, yep that's the exact command and we wait for that to get done Let's see if there's more so once this is done I should be able to remove the SD card I don't think there's a sync on your board yeah it just writes it uh, I should be able to remove the micro SD card which I am attempting to do right now right so now that I've removed the SD card with U-Boot um, I should actually have um, I should actually have it booting from SPI flash so I, I think we are already booting from SPI flash just an older build or something else not sure because it says loading environment from SPI flash, flash that should not be the case but anyways we'll reset it see if it loads up if it does then uh, we are running with SPI flash and hopefully that's the case so yeah there we go uh, we are booting directly from SPI flash which is perfect for me right next step is the fun part let's install freaking Fedora I have my um, USB disk with everything on it uh, with with the Fedora everything 34 ISO so with net install so I can just connect to a network and install Fedora uh, via the like downloading packages from the fresh packages from the network um, everything gives the everything ISO gives me a bit more flexibility so I'm using that plug that in and hopefully whoa hey, hey. that got stuck um is that the, is the super speed one right here so yeah okay that shouldn't be the case oh well, we'll restart it anyways and waiting for it to boot it has detected the usb drive and zero storage devices found that's fun <laughs> no <laughs> okay <laughs> okay zero storage device found let's go usb 2 maybe that works the other thing i'm guessing is it might just not use the ISO format that I'm trying to boot it with which is a situation so I probably just use the 128 gig card as a boot device but then SD cards are slow so I might need to pop that 64 gig out and you know just boot from it like write the raw image that Fedora provides for ARM64 to that EMMC and then boot from it if I want to boot from an EMMC that is all right for the extreme purposes of just demonstrating how this works I am just going to write it to an SD card and boot Fedora and that will be it but for my own purpose I will later on remove the EMMC write Fedora directly to the EMMC and boot from it currently the issue I can find uh, I can figure out is that the any the, the, the all the installer files for Fedora are in .iso and it doesn't like .iso format like it doesn't recognize it the uboot is not booting the .iso format so that needs to be fixed somewhere along the lines but what I'll do is just write the Fedora raw image to um, to the SD card and uh, should I bring everyone along for the ride? Yeah, sure um, so here's the SD card 
I just select uh, restore disk image and uh, you guys can can't probably see it because VLAN capture um, huh, that's a different so I have a bunch of ISOs here but what I also have are raw files so I'll just take the workstation 34 1.2 raw open that and select start restore and here you can see it has started to restore it onto the SD card and it'll take another 10 minutes to do so All right, so that's done. Um, remove this and eject. Hopefully this boots. If not, I'll need to have a talk with a few people. Right, powering it on. And let's see if it does anything. Oh, zero storage devices. Ah, there you go, Fedora. Woo! <laughs> yeah, that one. <laughs> so it was the ISO thing. It, it does not like booting ISO formatted disks. Which is weird. It should. But it doesn't. Um no clue what's happening right now I'm guessing I'll just be dropped to gnome or something uh, I hate quiet boot oh there you go that's the uh, Fedora booting logo it took a while honestly but mm, as far as it works properly there you go um fedora 34 startup screen of course i can't see crap because the camera's in the way but let's set this up now, i know i'm like setting it up but um i'm going to format it and put everything on emc anyway so eh, who cares That's it, all done, all set up. Let's connect to my Wi Fi and download GLMark 2 because hooray, Panfrost, it's all graphically accelerated. Okay, GNOME 40. GNOME. 40 40 what are you going to call it right um terminal hello there you go Let's just run glx cares okay there you go and what do we have um 
Yeah, pan frost. Yay. Let's connect to the network and wait, no Wi Fi. I remember this because Windows not uploading their firmware to Linux firmware repo and everything. No, we can't have good things. <laughs> All right. I should have a Wi Fi dongle somewhere. All right, let's try a mind test first and see how that performs. Uh, I'll not increase the resolution, but uh, let's go into settings and all settings. Let me leave everything at default. Debug and enable the debug mode. and start a new game <clears throat> so it's working seems to be smooth so it dips down to upper 20s lower 20s and then it starts to get choppy if there's too much to draw but as far as 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 far as reverse engineer drivers go especially for the mali stuff i hope this all improves um but yeah working fine i don't expect too much of it also this is a very single threaded game so i'm also assuming that somehow somewhere uh, it's running on a single core Cortex A72 and that's somehow limiting it as well. Uh, apart from that, seems fine. So I can just exit to OS and now we can run GLMark2. Right, so while that's running, um, thank you so much for watching. I will leave you all with this benchmark. And especially thanks to Fedora folks, uh, Peter Robinson for and, uh, and other folks who have helped to get PointBook Pro up and running, especially the Arca 3399 platform as a whole. Um, the upstream U-Boot folks who've done their work and everyone else in between. So this is amazing. This is a nice thin and light that I can carry around also runs uh my favorite distro that i can use and i'm used to running um yeah that's uh, that's that's pretty much about it thank you so much for watching and i will see you all in the next one